I'm uh, a teacher here in the city at uh, Lake New School. I teach grade six, seven. Um, one of the some of you may be tired of hearing from me since I've been doing some of the panels uh, or the uh, breakout rooms today. But, uh, bear with us for a few more minutes. Uh, we have some really interesting perspectives to share. So as we kind of got ready for this event. Um, one of the things that we really wanted to do was make sure that there was a youth voice at, uh, at the event to make sure that, you know, we're here for a just transition and establishing a just transition in Saskatchewan because we want the next generations to have a life and be able to live in this province in, in a way that um, is meaningful. And so it was important for us to include their voices. And so we worked together um, with, uh, with a, a number of different people, and, and Josh Campbell helped here um, to bring some of his students today. But basically, we gave students uh, five questions. We asked them, you know, how does uh, climate change impact your life today? Uh, what, how do you feel about climate change? Are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic about the future? Because we wanted to hear what they have to say. So, I'm not going to talk anymore. We're going to get them up here. So, um, I will get all of them to come up here. We're going to put them in order. So, uh, our first presenter will be Emily Schneider. Emily is a uh, student at Greenall High School. Uh, next is going to be Nate McFadden. So Emily, just have a seat there. Nate, come on up. You're going to be up here. Nate's a, a, a grade 8 student from Lakeview. Ella Patterson is a grade 7 student from Lakeview School. Um, Ellen Marion is a student from Miller. Miller. What grade are you, Ella? Or um, Ellen? Grade 10. Grade 10. Sorry, I didn't get the, the, the uh, grades for my uh, Miller kids. Ralph Gonzalez, come on up. What grade are you in, Ralph? I'm grade 11. 11. Amira Corsino. And then Caitlin ba Bass. We also, we were hoping to uh, have uh, some of the kids from Burke Fox today. Unfortunately, they weren't able to be with us, but we did see their videos about some of their perspectives at lunch. Um, and so uh, we're thankful for that. So without further ado, I'm just going to call up Emily Schneider. The kids are going to give a three to five minute presentation, kind of answering some of those questions and giving you some of their insight around climate and uh, a just transition. So come on up, Emily. Good afternoon, my name is Emily Schneider and I am a grade 12 student at Green Hall High School. Before I start, I'd just like to say thanks to Jared. Um, climate change is a fairly new topic to me, but one I have become very passionate about. It wasn't until I heard how little time we have to make changes that climate change really started to frighten me. In only 12 years, the damages of climate change will become disastrous. What does this mean for future generations? This means more intense drought, threatening crops, wildlife, and fresh water supply. It means more frequent wildfires and an increase in the number, duration, and intensity of tropical storms. It means rising temperatures, rising sea levels, and an ice-free Arctic. All because humans have to leave every single light on in the house while they're running the TV in two different rooms. Instead of wearing a jacket, they start their vehicle 15 to 20 minutes before their departure time just to ensure it will be warm enough when they climb inside. And my biggest pet peeve, they throw their garbage out the window because God forbid they can't hold on to it until they come across the trash can. That's just naming a few. My friends always say to me, oh Emily, it's just one cup or one wrapper. But imagine all 7.6 billion people in this world saying it's just one. One adds up fast. It scares me to think that temperatures are rising at such an alarming rate. This means various health issues such as asthma, heart problems, cancer, lung disease, and much more. We are doing this to ourselves. Just think about your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Imagine them life without water or an extremely poisonous air to breathe. It terrifies me to think that my children or grandchildren would ever have to deal with those type of living conditions. In our province alone, we account for 10% of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions, equaling 2% of global emissions. 
Oil and gas accounts for 32% of provincial emissions. Agriculture accounts for 24%. Electricity, 19%. Transportation, 14%. And mining, 3%. I think it's great that Saskatchewan is taking action in key areas including natural systems, physical infrastructure, and economic sustainability. January 1, 2018, the management and reduction of greenhouse gases, general and electricity producer regulations took effect. February and March 2018, provincial officials engaged with industry and others to seek input on the development of specific regulatory approaches. The government then passed the Management and Reduction of Greenhouse Gases General and Reporting Regulations with its associated standard ensuring that facilities emitting over 10,000 tons of greenhouse gas annually report to the province. The government announced output-based performance standards that will regulate Saskatchewan's large industrial facilities to reduce greenhouse gases by an initial 5.3 million tons from 2019 to 2030 achieving 10% reductions by 2030. The government of Saskatchewan states that the next step includes development of resilience measures and targets, further legislative amendments and compliance options. Although I believe Saskatchewan is making some great changes, I, don't, I think they could be doing more of the little things. Ban plastic straws, promote green energy. I believe every government owned building should be running off solar energy. Set the example. Being completely honest, coming here today, I did not have the hope for a future that I wish I did. I always see more of a negative than I do positive. People just don't understand how fast climate change is moving, and for that reason, reason, I didn't see our bad habits being resolved as soon as they should. Numbers are only rising. Last week, when temperatures were reaching lows of only minus 10 degrees, I could not believe my eyes when I seen students in my class starting their vehicles within the last 10 minutes of class. Everywhere I go, I see litter. Most people I know run their shower for five minutes before hopping in just so the water is warm when they enter. Although, although today's event has definitely opened my eyes to the positive actions being taken to improve our future. Since we made this mess, it is our responsibility to clean it up. Purchase solar panels to power your home. Turn off your lights when you're not in the room. Shop local. Reduce wrappers by making homemade snacks and pack your lunch in reusable containers. Only turn on the shower when you're actually in it. Carpool, take the bus, bike, or walk. Only run your car long enough to allow the motor to warm up in the winter, winter months before taking off. Purchase reusable cups, mugs, and straws. Recycle and throw your trash in the garbage, not on the ground. Those are only a few small things you could do to help. Do your research and let's clean this place up. We have 12 years to save the world. Everything counts. Thank you. I'm 13 years old and I'm in grade 8 at Lakeview School. I didn't really know very much about climate change until I met my grade 6 teacher, Mr. Clark. He inspired me to become more involved in climate change. Mr. Clark is very passionate about climate change and because of this, many of my peers and myself have become more aware of the importance of taking care of our environment. Mr. Clark last year attended a summit on climate change. He shared a slide presentation with our class when he returned and we learned about the impacts of climate change. I was especially affected by the impact of climate change on plants and animals. One of the things that really worries me is that according to the World Wildlife Federation, the world could lose two-thirds of wild animals by 2020. This makes me feel sad and angry because I love animals and I cannot imagine a world without some of these species. The world the future's children may never see some of these plants and animals because of climate change. In Canada, we have over 600 species of plants and animals that are at risk. This includes some amazing animals such as the polar bear, the caribou, the beluga whale, and the narwhal. One of the biggest threats to wildlife is climate change. Research tells us that in Canada, the rate of warming is increasing at nearly twice the global average. What does this mean for our animals? It means that they are affected by changing seasons and rising temperatures. They will suffer because they have difficulties with finding food and places to live or places to migrate. They are losing their habitats and we have to try to prevent this. What are some things we can all do to help protect and save our animals from becoming endangered or extinct? One of the 
the best things we can do is actually do our part in simple ways to protect their habitats and their home. When I was at the Atlanta Zoo, we learned that recycling our cell phones and other electronics is important to protecting gorillas because a mineral from their habitat is being mined to power cell phones and it is causing their species to become endangered. We can also reduce our pollution. We could choose to walk more, ride our bikes, and drive less. Also, we need to get better at remembering to take our reusable shopping bags into stores and stop <laughs> using plastic bags and reduce our use of plastic contain plastic bags. Even the plastic that holds up pop cans together can affect as they get tangled up in ocean animals and they then they digest them and die. Just take a few seconds to be sure to cut those up each time you throw one away, or better yet, stop buying pop cans this way. You can also cut down on plastic by conserving water and use a refillable water bottle. We all need to make it a priority to reduce, reuse, and recycle as much as possible. But the most important thing we need is for our politicians to follow through with what they promised my generation. When it comes to climate change, we need renewable energy in this province. I'm excited about the Regina City Council voting on a motion to make Regina 100% renewable. This will be better for the environment and future generations like me. We need policies that encourage people to live more sustainably. So if you are a politician or a community leader here today, please fight for my future. I want to live in a world full of nature where animals are abundant and protected. I stay optimistic because I know there can be a change. If everyone here can do their part and Saskatchewan and Canada can do their part, we can make a big change together. Step by step, it can get better. Thank you. My name is Ella, and I'm a grade 7 student at Lakeview Elementary School. I am more than thrilled to be here today to talk to you about my opinions on climate change. Climate change has begun to affect people all around the world, with more reports of terrible storms, hurricanes, floods, wildfires, and droughts. As Barack Obama says, climate change is no longer some far off problem. It is happening here, it is happening now. It seems to be becoming the new normal within our everyday news. I'm only 12 years old, and I believe I have already been witnessing the effects of climate change. I spend my summers in British Columbia with my Baba and Dada, Grandma and Grandpa in Russian, and I have noticed how the temperature is increasing and how there is little rainfall during the summer. Two years ago, I visited British Columbia for about a month. In that time, a few bushfires had started here and there, and soon, it spiraled out of control, where there was regular warnings on the news telling people to stay indoors because of all the smoke. Now in 2018, those fires have become even more deadly, smoke becoming so bad that people had to wear masks just to go outside. And since the smoke was so thick, it looked like it was midnight during midday. With that being said about the increase of smoke from fires within the two years, what worries me the most about climate change has to be that we are the cause of it. I know that this seems like a huge statement to come from a 12-year-old. However, I remember one time my mother sent me this news article about climate change that really spoke to me. In this article, it talked about how big companies are taking advantage of all those people who are in danger because of these terrible storms like hurricanes, tsunamis, and floods, and building new hotels in these areas knowing that people will need rooms to stay in, so they not only raise the prices of their rooms, but airlines raise their prices and everyone seems to benefit except for those who lose everything. These companies then use, then use money not to support the families that are displaced or help provide aid and recovery efforts, but instead put the money into their own companies like fossil fuels, coal, and natural gases, etc. This shocked me and made me question how they put money over lives. And then to continue reading and hear that it is these big companies that are destroying our climate. And although it is a great, it, although it is great when we as individuals try to be more environmentally friendly by say carpooling to work, riding a bike instead of driving, but it really isn't going to make that much of a difference. It was I was once asked if, uh, if as a youth I was optimistic or pessimistic about our future because of climate change. Before reading the article, I was not sure where I stood. 
I wanted to be optimistic that we as a generation could have had a better effect and create great change. As my old teacher, Ms. Kristen, always said to us, you are a future generation. It is your world you, live, you have to live in. How you take care of it now, how you view it now, is what it will become. So what are you going to do about it? These statements were very powerful in making me think about my actions and my future and what I was going to do when I became an adult. But is it too late? According to the article I spoke about earlier, it stated climate change has had such an impact on the Earth that there is no going back. We have affected our Earth too much, and if these large companies do not make a change and stand up for our environment, then in 12 years, we will see the worst aspects of climate change unleash havoc on the world's population and economy. So now, how can I be optimistic? My message to the public and to our government that I want to grow up in a world where I do not have to fear the effects of climate change. Good afternoon. I'm Ellen Marion. Um, I'm in grade 10 at Miller. I think that Regina could do a lot better at taking action on climate change. Between the oil refinery, Everest, vehicles, and other instances of burning fossil fuels, we cause climate change. There are many missed opportunities that could help us with our environmental footprint, one of them being solar panels. Considering that Regina gets a lot of sunshine, it doesn't make sense to not have solar panels. Although it cost a lot of money initially, over time it would help us save money on power. Not only that, but it would create jobs for many people. Although there is room for improvement, Saskatchewan has made strides in the right direction. Since 2014, over 1.5 million tons of CO2 has been kept from entering our air by putting up a power station dam south of Estevan. Solar panels would be a great way for Regina to do their part in helping our environment, and by adopting the motion to make Regina a 100% renewable city by 2050 would set this in motion. Regina adopting the Declaration for a Healthier Environment was another great step towards a better future. It's important that we continue in the direction of improving and making positive changes to help preserve the Earth. Hello everyone, I'm Ralph Kanekanitas and I'm great that I've been at Miller High School and I miss living in paradise. Fresh air, clear, clear sky, beautiful landscape, and re relaxing sounds. In the Philippines, my home com country, the tropical vibe is everywhere. It's the most beautiful paradise for me, but now it's rapidly getting destroyed. I experienced a lot of typhoons, a lot of flooding, and property getting destroyed. I didn't notice the rapid change of climate. I didn't realize earlier that the paradise I love was suffering from our mistakes. These past few years, the Philippines have suffered from a lot of strong, terrifying typhoons. In 2013, one of the strongest typhoons, Yolanda, hit the Philippines and destroyed millions of property and places which cost about $14 billion. I remember the time when we needed to evacuate because there was a threat of flooding. We evacuated, we evacuated our home immediately leaving everything behind and hoping that I didn't get lost. We didn't have a choice because the blood might hit at any time. And we only had our prayers and faith that everyone would be safe. We quickly moved to a friend's place that was on high ground. When the area of this typhoon was hitting our place, it was night time. I could hear the very loud blow of the wind. There's like a tornado that's going to destroy the building. It was very terrifying. There was no electricity everywhere, and only the little light of the candles was keeping us able to see in the dark. It, it was the most terrifying horror of my life. A few days, a few days later, the flood was still there. We didn't know if our house and everything was, and it was still fine. We were, we were just hoping that there was some of our property left. 
we were waiting for the food supply to get but brought to our friend's place. It was very for everyone to lose a property and maybe even a loved one. The researchers of University of Virginia, um, which major um, Montpelier and Exeter found, found out that the rich countries that have con contributed most to climate change will see less temperature fluctuation, whereas in poor countries the fluctuation will become stronger. This, re this research proved that every country is also involved in climate change that is happening everywhere. As the year passed by, the normal typhoon strength is becoming stronger and stronger. This year, another strong typhoon, Manco, hit the Philippines and other parts of Asia. I felt sad when I heard that news because I know that people will suffer again from a terrifying nightmare caused by climate change. The climate change in the Asia has, has gotten so bad that everything is affected. The temperature is going so high up to 40 degrees and sometimes around 50 degrees. That is affecting many farmers. It's also causing yearly flood that destroys property and crops. The harmful effects of climate change is being felt all over the world. Even here in Regina, my relatives have told me that the changes of climate here became worse than what is normal climate before. I'm afraid that one day, this place is going to end up with even worse climate change. I want to support the idea of making this city's source of energy completely renewable because it is a small step that could lead to a bigger benefit. I, I want to make this step successful because it will encourage other cities to do the same until it spread city by city, province by province, country by country, everywhere. It will be a huge benefit to us and to the world we're living. As a teenager, I really want to see this done because I'm hoping that someday it will be a very helpful step to protect our planet and prevent this world from getting destroyed. It's my wish to bring a similar action to my country to reduce climate change before it's not too late. I also want to encourage other people, especially the teenagers that need to support this step because I believe that our ge ge generation is the hope for a better world. I hope that the paradise that I know will not fade because we did something good and we stopped doing something that is bad for us and this planet. I hope that all of us can live in a paradise before people forget about this step. And I see that this motion for a hundred percent renewable by 2050 as a great step in the right direction. Wildfires and droughts. 
They also endangered the ability to obtain food supplies. It also drove people from their homes. It separated families and jeopardized livelihoods of individuals. All these effects increased the risk of conflict, hunger, and poverty in our society. It is helpful to think if us humans are doing anything for the sake of our planet. As an individual who came from a tropical country, which is the Philippines, uh, it has been a bizarre experience moving to a different country that it had a huge impact on myself and my family. When I was back in my own country, everyone was exposed to danger from the bad populated air. An example of this was when I was a child. I had an asthma due to the bad side effects of the populated, populated air that had, the people had been breathing in and out of the air. Then, when me and my family arrived at Canada, I noticed that in the air was more better quality and cleaner because it helped my asthma to lessen. At this point, I knew that I would be leaving Canada for a very long time, and I would soon adapt to the environment in Canada. I remember going to the Wisconsin Park for the very first time, and the view was astonishing and breathtaking. As I grew up in Canada, I gave more attention to the environment, and as well as written reports about climate change, because it made me realize that climate change will affect our future generations like myself. This topic has interested me the most since it's related to me and to others, since we cannot ignore the fact that this habitable planet is where our future generation and our ancestry will explore the depths of the wonderful nature of Earth for the next thousands of years. To conclude, whenever I think of how climate change can affect me or my family, but also every single person in this living planet, it shows how much our planet needs our help. However, we cannot do this alone. I am calling upon people to show their strength to give their better use of engaging to this topic. The need to solve to this problem, which will or might affect us in the nearby future. In that way, I am able to spread awareness and contribute to this conflict all throughout the city of Japan. Good afternoon. My name is Caitlin Boss. I am a 16-year-old high school student at Miller. I'd like to thank all of you for attending today and for Mr. Cameron for an opportunity for my voice to be heard. It is a common perspective in the scientific community that our global climate is changing and it is due to the emissions of greenhouse gases. Our climate is changing rampantly and it is all hands on deck to minimize the effects that are already set to occur. As a young person in Saskatchewan, I have concerns with the direction we are heading. I have concerns in the matters of climate change itself, our action as a province, the future, and how it's affecting my family. I have been affected by climate change. My stepdad is a farmer, and he could not properly harvest his crops because they are under six inches of snow right now, and did not germinate due to the lack of rainfall this spring. We just got our garden out, like, yesterday because my mom ended up digging through and pulling tarps off and ended up digging through some frost in the ground. We run a horse farm of over 50 head of horses and our pastures did not get the rain they needed in the spring to bounce back from last year. As a student, I am concerned about climate change. My first concern is the fallout of not doing enough in time. According to a research report from the Palo Alto Research Center, we are in for water scarcity, crop failure, and drought, among other things in this province. This is due to climate change. These projected effects will impact all of us. They will impact our industry, our prices on clothing and food, and our everyday lives. My second concern is the current disinformation campaign surrounding climate change. Some in this province are of the mind that we have grasslands and forests, so we are essentially a carbon storage facility. This is true to an extent. However, the flaw in this thinking is that we keep that carbon there. In reality, we have agriculture and forest industries in this province as well, 
in which we remove those carbon banks through burning or harvesting. We burn off many fields when we are done with them. A much better solution would be to bale and sell straw or hay from that crop. In forestry, we can reduce our usage, not move so often, live in the housing that already exists instead of building more than we need, using less paper and digitizing our paperwork. We are told that there are no viable solutions when all you have to do is think outside your own little bubble. As a young person, I do not think Saskatchewan is doing a good job on taking action on climate change. We are procrastinating taking the action needed in favor of short-term benefits. We are rightfully concerned about any action's effect on industry, but the truth of the matter is that long-term effects of climate change are going to be way worse for industry than the short-term ones. A long-term solution that would be feasible is the carbon tax. I know none of us here want more taxes, but it's simply basic economics. When we increase the price on an item, the usage goes down. We can see tangible evidence of this on the price of cigarettes. According to a 2011 study by the NDPI, when the price of cigarettes went up, the usage decreased across the board. The carbon tax will do the same thing. It taxes people and industry according to their carbon output and incentivizes good behavior. This is projected to be good for those who are poor. Our industry, which is heavily based upon fossil fuels, will adjust and innovate. Industries have been doing it for centuries. I am pessimistic about my future due to climate change. The negative impacts of climate change and the inaction do not make me hopeful. Right now, it's like we're sitting in the middle of a burning house fire with a cup of coffee, pretending everything is just fine. We acknowledge the house is on fire, but we blame the flames on someone else, and or say that we will get to it later. The house will be just fine. I don't want my generation to be the next homeowner who has already put a down payment on it to walk in on a pile of ash, dust, and rubble. At the end of the day, I don't get to choose what you all do. I don't get to choose the end game. All my generation gets to do is take the baton and keep running with it. And I don't want the race to be over yet. If we keep procrastinating, then my generation will have a harder race to run, if one at all. Climate change is real, its effects are real, and it is happening. I'm here speaking today because I want you all to know that we are counting on you. You are determining the very fabric of our futures right now with the decisions you make today. We don't get a vote, so we're counting on you to move with your votes on our behalf. In the long and the short of it, we have to take action, stop procrastinating, and do what is necessary to lessen the impact of climate change. At this second, you're at the wheel, and I'm here backseat driving. The next person behind the wheel is going to be me, and I'm going to have to deal with whatever you do to the vehicle. Thank you. So, Mr. Campbell and I did, did not do any editing on any of the uh, presentations. These are their own words, and I think that was an important piece to it. So I want to say thank you to you guys for being here today for sharing your perspectives, your words, your ideas, um, and hopes and scares or, or fears of the future. So let's give them one more round of applause. <laughs>